Okay, our last speaker before the break is Harry Aiko from the University of Hawaii. Extension support of aquaponic farms in Hawaii and U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands. <coughs> um, good morning, everybody. Um, I want to talk about the work I've done since 2008. So I need a little bit, I asked Gary for a little bit extra time because I'm going to be dealing with several subjects. Okay, aquaponics is a simultaneous culture of fish and plants. And for Jean, um, Kim, we do it very cheaply. I simply told the farmer to dig a hole in the ground, make uh, cinder block walls to the hole and put a liner on it and there you got a fish tank. Okay, fish are in the tank, the fish are fed, they release metabolites, and one of these um, pipes there pumps the water to the grow beds, and these are the grow beds, and this farm always looks empty. Why does it always look empty and unused? Because they harvest twice a week, and they take them to the supermarkets. Uh, it looks like uh, spinach here, Shanghai bok choy, whatever. Okay, and these are the babies because they, they, they have a turnover constantly. Okay, outline of what we're doing. I want to first suggest that commercially sustainable aquaponics exists and we've got three, two farms, two successful farms in Hawaii and one successful farm in American Samoa. They are very lucrative. They generate biotechnology sorts of incomes for the farmers. I don't know what that really means, but I do know that the, each of the farmers earns over $100,000 a year net. That's a good enough income to, to recommend getting into farming. Okay, and it's real, it's not bogus. We have access to people's tax returns. Um, and we have access because one of our PIs um, educated every single person in the tax office in the state of Hawaii, and he confidentially goes and looks at the tax records. <laughs> okay. And we know those are real, okay? Those are not bogus, okay. Second bullet point is we approach aquaponics from the biotechnology point of view. Um, biotechnology offers precision and accuracy as opposed to regular aquaculture, which is a little fuzzy. We will demonstrate in our talk, I will demonstrate in our talk, that we have become commercially profitable because we have a ruthless minimization of capital costs. Our work is focused on a minimization of energy costs. We are very, very watt adversive. And our work focuses on a maximization of revenue streams. The most important part of that is a USDA organic certified sticker, which we put on every bag for every container we sell. <clears throat> um, we did not develop this as a hobby. Hobbyists have their own function, and I've learned that in this conference, and I'll say what I, th what I think later on. Okay. We developed our systems based on a nutrient flux hypothesis. And what we did was we took a consensus right here, the consensus levels of inorganic substances in the water, um, and we took that from hydroponesis. And they said, this is what you need to feed 60, 50 lettuce plants in 370 liters of water for the lifetime of the plant, and that's what they'll need consensus. Then we put 
the, the lettuce plants in the water and we let them grow and at the end of the growth period we measure the, the minerals in the water. So you can see first of all started with 33 grams nitrogen you ended up with 1.7 the lettuce plants ate a whole lot of nitrogen. Potassium 54 7.7 .7, they ate a whole lot of potassium. Phosphorus started with 11 they ate uh, 5.1 remained and so they ate a whole lot of phosphorus. Some of the things you put a lot in and they didn't eat very much. Okay, let's change this column which is named used up to requirements. Okay, some people think I'm a fish nutritionist. Actually, I'm not. I'm a biochemist. <laughs> but in fish nutrition, you'd call that a requirement. So, well, fish, plants, same thing. Okay, so then we move one step further and we change the units a little bit. Um, we feed some fish 200 liters of water, 10 kilograms per cubic meter. We feed them 14 grams of feed and we look what minerals the fish release into the water. And you can see that the fish release 31 or 30 grams of nitrogen, but they need 42. Whoops, not good enough, right? Um, phosphorus is another one, they need eight. If you feed them 14 grams of feed, you'll only have five, so not good enough. I'll have a slide that follows up on this and so on and so forth. The bottom line, if you feed these fish in the 200 liters, 40 grams of 42% feed, you will have enough nitrogen, you will have enough potassium, calcium, etc., etc. So there's extras, but you'll have enough of the key limiting ingredients except for iron. You won't have enough iron, so you have to add the iron supplement later on. That's how we do aquaponics. Okay, what if you don't feed the um, plants enough? So a po this is the control, you feeding the fish 40 grams of fish feed, 42% fish feed and your lettuce at the end will be 231, which is good for a Manoa lettuce, which is a succulent little lettuce. If you feed them one-fourth, feed the fish one-fourth the nutrients, you will notice that the lettuce is very small. If you feed them half the nutrients, lettuce is small. The reason for this is not that you run out of nutrients. The reason is that the nutrients are in the water at too low a concentration for the receptors for the nutrients on the plant roots to grab them. Okay, and we'll see uh, some other consequences of this. Um, we've done other experiments showing that phosphorus can be limiting. You can make phosphorus limit limiting, and I mean potassium limiting, and the plants will wilt, and they'll be small. If you don't have enough iron, the plants will get um, yellow. Okay, so therefore, um, since I, I'm biotechnology, biochemistry based, I call every problem a lethal error, as in lethal mutation. <laughs> and we have some very famous systems, one which was advertised that contains in the design of the system a lethal error. That's why he hasn't got any commercially viable people. First lethal error what I want to talk about is in planning. You can see here that we've got little boxes of plywoods, 12 plywood boxes per raceway. 
if that's not completely absolutely level some of the plants in the race one end or the other of the race will, will get no nutrient water so the first lethal error you can make is not to get a bobcat and level your dirt um, I have there's no judgmental error a ju judgment here because I've done that mistake myself I got a relatively level piece of land I said oh no problem I'll just shim the the ones that are you know too little wow that took so long to shim <laughs> it's better just get the bobcat and run around and level the thing so that's lethal error number one not unlevel land um, and you can find out how to use a bobcat by using YouTube <laughs> okay so um, construction start off with a piece of plywood put side aside and you screw the sides to the bottom but if you look at this one oops you notice that you do it upside down and this is in American Samoa and that's uh, Apella's grandson and he's screwing the, the sides to the bottom so that's how you construct it this is another view. This is Francis in the back of the Sea Grant office in American Samoa. The demonstration runs we we did for them. We did we made them build demonstration runs of two plywoods a piece. Why two? Because it's more than one. If they can do two, you can do twelve. So we did two at a time. And you notice that there's two boxes on cinder blocks. Why cinder blocks? So you don't have to bend down. <laughs> okay, and they're, they're putting on the plastic liner with a staple gun. So you just, cheap, cheap staple gun. Um, this is another picture. Um, this, this is my student. This is, I would call this a starter farm. There's five of these. Um, the student went on to, she's not a veterinarian. Um, the one other point I want to make here is relative to every other system I've seen, we are at least six times cheaper than them per unit grow area of plants. I see a lot of really, really nice ones in, in, in the YouTubes. And I said, oh boy, not for our farmers. They can't afford that. Um, are our systems flimsy? Yes, they're flimsy. They're only 10 years old. And maybe in 10 more years, they'll fall apart. But they're at least 10 years. They have a lifetime of at least 10 years. And we know because we started in 2009 and they're still going and they're still expanding. So one secret is our systems are cheap. Okay, other lethal errors. First one was not leveling. Second one is starting a farm with no marketing plan. You need to know how much lettuce or bok choy or basil or something somebody will buy and what price they'll pay. You do that before you get anything in the ground. Um, somebody, I think um, Jim went to the big island and visited and he said, oh, there's aquaponics things on the big island but I didn't see any why didn't he see any the, oh there he is they all started without a marketing plan a lot of them borrowed a lot of money to build their aquaponics outfits and they all went bankrupt <coughs> every single one lethal error number three sun issues 
Plants need sun to grow. There's a thousand things you have to consider and sometimes you forget one of the most obvious ones. Uh, hobbyists usually put their aquaponic stuff on the side of their house. In other words, they get half the sun they need because half the time the, the, the shade is over their aquaponics thing. <coughs> Somebody did a aquaponics outfit and put it under the mango tree. <laughs> Not smart, on hindsight, but only on hindsight. You can make a lot, a lot of errors. Okay, some people put their fish in unshaded tanks and what happens if you put fish and food, you'll get algae. And algae will eat up all your nutrients that should go to your plants. Lethal error number four. This is the one that the most common popular aquaponics outfit suffers from. If you have too dilute a plant water volume, you will dilute out your nutrients and your plants will grow poorly. Uh, I hope the person who did that changes his thing because as far as I know, he's still say, saying the same thing because the chairman of our um, uh, industry group built one based on this guy's recommendation and he has a 12 inch water bed. The water will, that amount of water will be too dilute. Okay, lethal error number five, plant roots need air. Recently we've improved that. We put them on polystyrene rafts and we make very small holes so the net pots don't fit, they don't reach the water. So there's a little air gap there. Um, lethal error number six, in this whole presentation I say 50 plants, 370 liters of water, um, 0.4 cubic feet air per minute per 200 liters of fish, 10 kilograms per cubic meter, etc., etc. Everything is in proportion to our little lab setup. Okay. Ways to avoid this, feed fish the appropriate amount, 40 grams of 42% protein per day in proportion. We've tried 38% Rangan trout. Not enough nitrate in the water for the plants to grow. You gotta overdo the um, um, protein. Clean your, pro bed, your grow beds periodically or fish solids will accumulate. The bacteria will start metabolizing the fish solids and your DO will be too low. And that causes two problems. First of all, the plant roots won't get any oxygen to grow and you have stunted roots. Second problem, denitrifying bacteria which are anaerobic will start growing and all your good nitrate fertilizer will go up in the air as nitrogen gas. We are working on this right now. And when I go home, as <coughs> soon as I hit the deck, I'll pick up the phone and call my farmer and I'll tell him that a lady from Wisconsin <laughs> said that a radial flow settler probably will work. So we'll install that as soon as I get home. Okay, and I'll tell you, uh, I'll get it, well, okay. I'll get ahead a little bit on that issue and I will say that my calculations show that our farmers should make 250,000 net profit. He is only making 200,000 net profit. And he takes it as a challenge to get that last 50,000. So the lady from Wisconsin will show him how to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, if you prefer, you can do this by diagram. Um, feed goes into the fish, the fish releases ammonia, then nitrite, minerals, solids unfortunately. The nitrate formed from the nitrite and sunlight make the plant grow. Too low a DO gives you denitrification. 
Okay. When we started this whole thing in 2009, one day I picked up the phone and I call, called Clyde tomorrow and I said, you know what? I think I have enough information to, I want to say something. Can you start a um, workshop? So this is the workshop. Um, there, this room holds 188 people. You don't see any walkways or steps in the room. That's because people are sitting on the steps. Um, I'm going to deal with economics because I'm dealing with aquaculture, not marine biology. Okay. The photo shows all the people who attended our seminar, only one person in this whole crowd started a farm. The others are hobbyists. Are they interested? Yes. I not, from this conference, I now know what the use of hobbyists are. They're supporters, not detractors. And that's what their, their role in the world is, <laughs> to, to be supporters when they have, you know, town hall legislative meetings. Okay. I wanted to know while I was doing this, and this is why this talk is so long, it's, it's actually several talks all lumped together. Um, I wanted to know uh, seat of the pants economics, and Lotus Cam taught me how to do the economics, it's Ping Sun's student. Um, capital costs. So we built our system, which is right here. And you add up the cost from each hollow tile or cinder block. Holly t uh, cinder block is a mainland term. We call it hollow tiles in Hawaii. Um, just add up the cost, 15 cents each or whatever it is, I forgot. Um, the plywoods, sideboards, um, the shade house for lettuce. Lettuce is a temperate zone crop. It gets leaf burn in Hawaii. And after you add up the capital cost for this thing, you'll end up with two, gee, come on thing, two prices. One is the total cost for this one plywood unit, not this whole thing, one plywood. And the other one is an annual cost. You need the total cost to tell you what the loan is when you start your system, how big a loan you have to get. The annual cost is your running cost of capital per year. Okay, so from one plywood, let's expand. A five raceway starter farm will cost you $29,000 in loan. A VA loan would be good, or 3,200 running costs. A 30 raceway, one acre farm will cost you 170,000. The real economists estimate 212,000, but that, that's my number, okay. Operational costs. The interesting thing here is we, we did it for our one plywood system and then we expanded. And the interesting thing here is Besides labor, which is down here on the on the last column. Come on, thing. Jeez. Where's the button? Right there. Okay. Besides labor, the next highest cost is electricity because we have these little tiny pumps, but they run 24-7. Okay, so it costs you about $100,000. And notice feed is trivial. You need to do production, and this is bogus production numbers. It's bogus because it's ours, and we have an army of graduate students to take care of these few little plants. <laughs> Okay, this is what I wanted to do in the first place. I don't want to recommend to a farmer to do something when there's no profit involved. 
and I've been doing research for so long and you know ignoring it and like most most of us academics we we're so confused when we're younger we don't think about things like this but eventually it dawns on me that maybe somebody needs to make a living doing this okay so annual capital costs and these are the running costs for the 30 raceway farm would be 21,000 110,000 operating costs if you produce at the level I produce at with my army of graduate students, but expand it up, you'll make $312,000. Tilapia is an overestimate, not 75. Our farmers use such slow growing tilapia, they'll earn maybe $400 a week and they consider that chump change because they earn $8,000 or $10,000 a week on lettuce. So $400 is chump change. So <coughs> this um, 30 raceway system will be operated by a man and his wife and four neighborhood ladies who are retired, don't need health insurance, and they just walk to walk to the place because they live in the neighborhood. They regard it as extra money. Okay, so that's the economics we did, but there are real econom economists. Uh, one is Ping Sung Leong, who started the Society for Aquaculture Economics and Decision Sciences, and his protege is. Um, Carol Engel. Um, Dr. Tokunaga is his student and so they did a study and they published it in the Journal of the World Aquaculture Society which is we have the citation here. From a teaching perspective Lotus Cam who taught me economics after she graduated went to work for Amazon and just her personality was, she would always say, you can't expect people to do that, which is why it's, it's so easy to order something from Amazon. That's her attitude. But she did such a good job, she got stolen away by Microsoft. So now she works for Microsoft. She's one of the vice presidents. Uh, I don't want to visit her house. It will make me <laughs> say, It'll be uh, uh, overwhelming, probably. The other person, um, Kanai Tokunaga, got her doctorate and she earned a position at the University of Tokyo. Uh, these successes are a source of great pride for us. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they took three commercial farms and two of them were successful, one of them was not. And we have another one on another island that's not successful. And we wanted to just check our eco economics. They thought the farms would cost capital cost of 212,000. We thought 170. Those are s relatively similar. Um, operational costs, we thought 110, but we had the neighborhood ladies' salaries included. They didn't. Um, Overall profit, we predicted an overall profit of 256000 But if you use the more politically correct price for lettuce at $2.40, the overall profit would be 131000 That's baloney, but more politically correct because they sell at $4 a pound. Now they sell in little clamshells for $6 a pound. So these, they're selling higher than that. Um, they did production numbers for the first two years and they cannot produce as much as we could produce with our army of graduate students. They're getting better now. So if you correct for those, th their profit should be 38,000, which is close to 19,000 something. As I said, they make 200,000. Their farm vehicles are leased to Mercedes. Mm. <laughs> um, and 
they hope to get up to over 256,000 with the help of Wisconsin Stevens Point. <laughs> okay. Final slide. Aquaponics is biotechnology, which is more um, precise than standard aquaculture. It uses zero water after fill up because the tanks and the raceways are filled up by the rain. Um, it generates biotechnology like profit margins, which nobody can believe, but you know, I've got the tax returns, geez. Um, benchmarks for us are $200,000 capital costs, $100,000 operating costs, net profit $256,000 for one acre aquaponics farm. There is a lot of room for improvement because we still only produce less than 10% of the green leafy vegetables eaten in Hawaii. So there's other people who can step in and fill the gap. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to have a break so you can discuss with Harry.